Hello everybody, it's Robbie from Southern California and I came out to have my coffee this morning and I thought, you know what? I've got my camera in hand, which I should keep all the time because I never know what's going to show up or what I want to get a photo of. I thought I might answer a question that I get a lot. Why do I do certain things? Why don't you do this? How come you're not doing that? You know what? I think what it is is I never know what I'm going to do. I never know what I'm going to try. I change my mind a lot. I still haven't figured out what I'm going to put in there. I think it's going to be watermelon. Even though I've got watermelon, I believe, coming up in this one. Long story. Had some seeds I thought were no good, threw them in there, and they're like 20, 25 years old, and I think they're growing. Why don't I pick all my fruit and can them? I don't can fruit. I believe I did that a long time ago. Oh, a long, long time ago. Not in the canning when I've got so much growing all the time. Some people say, how come you don't just pick a whole bunch and do this? You need a cart. You know, you need a big basket. Gary once picked a whole bunch and we had a big basket. You know what? We're still working on that one from the last video last year. I like fresh. I got a shopping cart. Look, I got a shopping cart right here. Okay, I didn't buy a shopping cart to go shopping in my yard. Circus City went out of business. They were $5 impulse buy, but it's actually pretty good. I have an idea what now, after all these years, what I'm going to do with a shopping cart. I think I'm going to make a garden. I never know the way my brain works, what I'm going to do from one minute to the next. We could take a quick, well, yeah, we'll walk this way. I never know. Last night, one o'clock in the morning, I was trying to go through hundreds and hundreds of questions and comments on some of my videos. And it's really hard because there's like thousands. But I picked a video and started to go through and I got off afterwards and I ended up making candy. And that is right here, unbelievably candy. What I ended up doing was using one and a half cups of sugar and half a cup of water. I put a pinch of cream of tartar because I have no corn syrup and a squeeze of lemon for the citrus because I have no citrus asset and I cooked it on the stove in a heavy little metal pot uh, pretty high heat actually I stirred it in the beginning and then I stopped and it took I should have timed it it took about 15 20 minutes to reach 300 degrees now I've got to wait and it's supposed to in the next 15 minutes start to get hard I'm going to tell you something anything left on the bottom of the spoon tasted incredible the water was infused with peppermint from my deck garden. I grabbed two big branches of big leaves. I blended up the peppermint so that was in the blender. And then I strained it with not a super fine strainer, just a regular strainer. And I ended up with about three quarters of a cup of water, but I only put a total of a half a cup of water in here with the, the infused water with the peppermint. Who thought I'd make candy? See, I even have to do this. Still debating what I want to put in it. When I do it, you'll see the video. I ended up making candy. I haven't made candy before, but Gary kept saying he wanted candy, and, and he, I bought him something for his throat, so when he's taping, and keep, he can have something for his throat. You know, he's, he's got allergies, but thank goodness his allergies aren't bad, and he likes to have a little bit of candy here and there. So last night, out of the blue, I made candy out of my own peppermint. And he got up this morning. He's lucky it wasn't glass. And he ate it this morning. And before I got up, he was eating it. And he said, that's really good. It was good. After I made the candy, I made pickles out of zucchini I had picked out of here. Very simple pickles. I never know what I'm going to do. Sometimes I might run out in the middle of the night to go get something. I don't like storing food because I like using it fresh from the garden. I feel that if you can do fresh, see there's a zucchini down there. I did my garden tour a couple days ago and I pointed out the one that's there. I didn't realize there was more. So I took them, sliced them up, made pickles out of them, even though now I've got pickles. I never know what I'm gonna do. I never know why I'm gonna do it. And I think that's so important for everybody. I hope I never tell any of you guys what to do. I really try not to tell people what to do because what I do may not work for you. 
What I try to do is tell you what I'm doing in hopes that you might say, wow, she wants to pick a, you know, her zucchini small or, and I want to get them really big because I want to slice them up in half and I want to stuff them with cheese and all kinds of stuff and tomato sauce and lay it out in the oven and bake it up. And I want that thing to be like six pounds. That's fine because everybody knows what they want to do. Look at there's a big pepper here. So there's a big pepper down there. The thing is, what I'm trying to impress on anybody is I think we all need something. I don't care if you just go out to the garden and pick a piece of celery and just eat it or blend it up and drink it or whatever. I really, 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 really feel that a little goes a long way because adding to what's store-bought, you're getting nutrients from the garden. My candy was made with peppermint. I know I killed the enzymes in it by cooking it, but you know what? I didn't add any flavoring. My candy was sugar, water, peppermint, and a squeeze of lemon. That is it. And now we bought the candy. Gary wanted some hard candy and we're getting everything from Walmart delivered and stuff right now. Well, the wonderful thing with that was, and I'll show you the garden as I'm talking, different areas. The wonderful thing with that is by making the candy, that's all that's in it. Sugar, water, peppermint from my garden, picked immediately and used, and a little lemon. Well, all the candy we were looking for was listed with all these ingredients in it that you don't even know what it is. Plus, they put in dye number 40. Dye number 40 is not that good. We don't need dye number 40. And I haven't been going to the store. With everything going on, I know a lot of you are staying home or staying home as much as possible. We're not buying anything as far as food for takeout at all. A lot of my family, I found out, are not. Some are. Some are. You know, everybody's got to do what they want to do. I'm a little bit apprehensive of buying right now out because though food cooked is 100% fine, there's not going to be anything on it. It's everything else that goes with it that I, I worry about. I actually know somebody right now. Uh, she's a YouTuber. I guess it's okay to say little bean. She's got COVID-19 right now. And it's been determined. I spoke to her the other day that her husband got it from going to the restaurant. So, or going and getting takeout, whatever. It was food. He went, he stopped somewhere and they figured out where, or not where, but how he brought it into her. I'm just trying to be as safe as possible because the last time I had a flu, I was so sick, I didn't know if I was going to make it through it. I was so sick, I didn't even know what was going on. And Gary came down with the flu and I came down with the flu. He got it first, then I got it. I was on the couch for three days with 104 fever. I couldn't move. He didn't know I was that sick because he was so sick. And by the time he started getting better, he realized how sick I was. And then I ended up at the doctors and all kinds of medication and my oxygen levels were down. And this was quite a few years ago now before we started a garden. That's how far back that goes. I can't take a flu shot. I'm allergic to flu shots. My arm swells up and it will stay swollen for six months. They finally have determined that I take the flu shot, whatever's in there, and I wall it off. And it's funny, I only do it with the flu shots. I don't tend to do it with any other shots. But with the flu shot, I get this massive lump. My arm gets really sore, gets inflamed. I end up going back to the doctor in six months and they, there's nothing they can do. They said, your body took that whatever they put in the flu shot and it will wall it walls it off I literally wall it off and so I just don't I went to take it a couple years ago and my doctor told me no I wanted to try it she said there's no reason trying it so I didn't take it so I have been worried about everything going on so I am trying to play it as safe as possible because now having a garden and everything and having pneumonia when I was 19 pretty bad even though I ran around didn't even know until I was practically in the hospital I got really sick I don't know what it would be if I got sick now. Maybe it'd be perfectly fine. Maybe I wouldn't even know that I got sick, but I'm not gonna take a chance. So what I am doing is playing it safe, staying home and making everything possible that we need. I am buying stuff, but I'm not buying any produce. I don't need any produce. I've got 
all the produce I need. I might buy a little bit for some of the animals that I don't grow enough of, but as far as produce for us, I need zero. We have everything. The only produce I would buy is some, I like instant rice, even though Gary likes regular rice, because I can take rice, instant rice, and I really should do a video on that because so many of you would love it, and I can steam anything into instant rice and make a full meal out of it. I can add in any vegetable I want from the garden. This is what I've been doing. That's why I made the candy last night. Gary said he wanted candy. I bought him some candy. He said it was good. And I decided, well, geez, I make everything else. It can't be that hard. And it was so easy. And it brought back a flavor that I could remember as a kid. Probably a lot of you might remember or might not. It was called Sugar Daddy Pop, Sugar Daddy Lollipops. Even though mine was hard cracked, so it cracked, I, I scored it and cracked it in the pieces. The flavor was amazing. The flavor of the candy, I scored it and broke it up. First, I was struggling with it, and then I realized, oh, come on. I tiled an entire bathroom. So I scored it and snapped it to the size I wanted, and it worked out really, really good. But the flavor, well, the reason the flavor was so familiar to me, even though I ate that a long time ago, the candy that I was eating as a kid was made with sugar, pure sugar. A lot of the stuff now is high fructose corn syrup, corn syrup, a lot of different chemicals to so it will last and it doesn't have the same flavor at all. I know it and a lot of you know it. It doesn't have, it's like Ovaltine. I loved Ovaltine. I could sit down and eat a small bowl of Ovaltine as a kid and later on, I don't know what they did to it, but it was a powder and it looked like dried milk. When I was a kid, it was dark crystallized candy almost and it was crunchy and it was so good it melted in your mouth things changed over the years so what i'm trying to do now that i'm staying home and i seem to be busier now than ever and i don't well all the gardens i've got a garden now going up my driveway i got a garden my regular garden i take care of i've got the garden all the way in the back around where the bathtub is the truck bed i'm planting more trees uh, I've got the garden on the deck. I've got the garden in the front yard and then I still have to work. So, and I think that's why I've been so busy from morning till night. And that's why I can't get to all the questions and I'm trying. And I did it last night until about one in the morning. I went through a whole bunch. I try to go to the oldest, but then I try to go to the newest video and it's like, oh my goodness, there's thousands and thousands. And as fast as I answer, a bunch come in, but that's okay. So what I'm trying to make a point here, if I am trying to make a point, is there's a lot of things I should do, but I don't like, like, I don't want to just pick that big squash down there because, just because. I mean, it would be great if I want to, or if I was going to my parents' house, or I was handing it to my neighbor. Yes, I could pick a big, big squash down there, but it's going to stay soft as long as I keep it there. So in the next few days, I will try to pick it. I do need to pace my food growing here a little bit better. So as things start to look like maybe some of them grew a whole bunch of food and it's gonna die out, start getting a new plant ready and maybe plant it in another tote or in a container, compost the plant and plant a new one. Kind of pace myself a little bit. Pickles is one thing you can make pickles and store them. So I don't care on the cucumbers. I got cucumbers coming up everywhere now. So I can make, make it that way. Plus I really love cucumbers straight off the vine. They're so sweet. I only grow right now the small cucumbers. You can use them for salads or anything you want. The big ones, I, I don't know. I just like, that's my preference. See, everybody's going to grow what they want. Everybody's going to try different things. Be it one tote or be it dozens and dozens and dozens of totes. Whatever you want. One tote gets you a lot of food. You could get a lot of stuff for your family and still buy from the grocery store and be adding in a lot of fresh food. So, what I want is to everybody to grow a little something so you know you're getting good nutrients in you. That's the main thing. Fresh nutrients, something, enzymes, something you need to keep you healthy. Because I really feel, and Little Bean and I talked about it, I do really feel that she's getting through this with, with the issues she's had because she grows her own food and she has enzymes in her body. It, and I really am a strong believer that a little goes a long way. 
More is not necessarily better. It's like vitamins. You could overload on vitamins. People take vitamins, but you could take too many and cause a lot of health issues. That's why a little is okay, but too much of a lot of stuff is bad. Now, as far as the garden, you could eat everything out of your garden if you wanted to and not have to buy anything, and that would be perfect. But, you know, a lot of people can't. A lot of people won't. It takes a lot of time, and I understand that. This is taking me no time. What you see on the driveway... I didn't water it yesterday. Totes hold water. I have the holes, the drain holes, about one to two inches up. So there's always water in it if I don't water. Now, I can't leave it for a week. I don't use drip irrigation. A friend of mine set up his whole yard. He was all excited. Oh, I've got drip. And he worked and worked for weeks and weeks. Well, let's put it this way. He doesn't have drip irrigation anymore. Gophers got in there and chewed it. The ground squirrels got in there and chewed it up. It turned out to be a, a bigger headache for him than anything else. With totes, you water him and it holds the water. See, the, the tote is plastic. Don't worry about the plastic. Plastic doesn't break down and hit until it hits about 140 to 150 degrees. And if you've got that temperature going at 140, 150 degrees, you've got more problems then than your totes. So don't worry about it. You'd have bigger issues then. We're fine. The thing is, the plastic doesn't allow the water to evaporate. The water is only going to evaporate up. That's the only way it can go. Now, if you want to put mulch, whether it's grass clippings, straw, weeds you collect and crumble up, dry it up and put mulch on top, wood chips, rocks, layer it with pots, that will keep the water from evaporating too. So as far as watering, it doesn't take me long. It really doesn't. And if I do want to water all this, I just grab the hose, just go all the way down. Boom, 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 boom. You don't want to hit a heavy hose of you know, water spray on new seedlings. So you want to hand water that or water it off to the side. I just go down here and I have this side of the garden, all of this done in less than five minutes. Less than five minutes. I could probably do it in two. It's literally just going down because you know you're watering the plants. Once you're hitting the, the tote, it's going in. You're watering the plants, all of them. You're just walking down. You're getting water in there. So watering is not an issue. What's in maybe a little bit of work is going through and trimming off the brown leaves because anything that's really yellow, really, really yellow and brown, the plant is struggling to keep the leaf alive and you don't, it doesn't need it. So you trim that off. That's it. So I thought I'd just come out here and say, I try to pace myself. I'm trying now to get more things done. I'm really, really, my goal, if I have a goal, is to try to answer as many questions as possible and comments and to get people to grow something. I've got my brother now with a garden. I never even thought he'd grow a garden. My daughter, my daughter is becoming the, in her neighborhood, the expert gardener. She's running around all the neighbors, giving them plants. She's got people growing all around her now. They're all excited because she's growing so many seeds and too much is growing. This is somebody that really didn't garden. And when I used to talk to her, I hope she doesn't watch this because I don't like talking about her. She doesn't like that stuff. She was like, I'm not going to garden. I can go to the store and get all this stuff. What do, what do I need a garden for? And she's got a yard. Now she's got everything. She's even got totes set up, and she's got that now spaced around her garden, which is fantastic if you've got food growing in the ground or vegetables or flowers or anything in the ground because you can have the water leach out. Look at the weeds there. Those weeds are reaping the benefits of water coming out of the totes. That's why they're so green. There was nothing. We didn't have weeds like that. We had dead looking weeds that came up like down here but not that that's because it's reaping the benefit now i hear you screaming here come the questions why aren't you planting more around that big tomato is struggling i did not plant it came up in the rocks it's got some good leaves and it's got some curly leaves it there, there's no soil here it looks like there's soil but it's really rock this block wall's got a footing that goes down and comes out, Gary said, about six feet. So almost six feet into the driveway, a matter of about six inches, four inches, maybe four inches. Whatever's on the top of the rock goes in the cement. So there really isn't anything. Now, can I grow in the ground next to these totes in this driveway? Yes, I could dig some of the uh, soil on the top and the rocks away. I could put some potting soil or... or 
or garden soil down there and I could work my tail off to get some of it to grow. So yes, you could. I figure, you know what, I always, I'm, tr I'm a problem solver. That's kind of my personality. So I could do it, but I don't need to. I mean, I don't need to. I'm going to pull those weeds. And I'm going to compost those weeds. So let them do what they want to do. I see the birds running all along there and they go into all the totes and they use that as coverage. I see lizards growing, going in those weeds. Those weeds will be fine. Hand pull those weeds, throw them in a pot, let them dry up, and then put them as ground cover or use them in one of the totes that I'm setting up or freshening up or doing what I want. So that's okay. So I think I said I, what I really wanted to say is I'm doing the best I can and that I can with the situation of staying home. I'm really not buying all that much as far as produce. I haven't bought anything. Like I said, a couple things for the animals, but that's it. But nothing for us. We're growing everything that we could possibly need. And I love my herbs, so I can make my pizza. And yes, I have to get that up. I, I think I'm doing okay. So now I can make candy if Gary wants candy. I made him ice cream the other day. He came in and we haven't bought any ice cream even. And I made just milk. And I do buy the Hershey Simple. It's got almost no chemicals in it. No chemicals. So it's almost like five ingredients. And I mixed that in, one, two, three, and now I know how to make it even better. And he loved it. He said, this is really good. There's a lot of stuff we can make from home. And that's what's so good. I think so many people are making from home. My daughter is making everything from home. Her husband is cooking. The kids are cooking. I mean, this is what's so great. They're making everything and so much from the garden. She's got purple tree color that's bigger than ours because we gave them to her before we put any in the ground. And so she's got massive tree color. She's got squash growing all over, cucumbers. I, she's got everything. She's got a lot going. And this is somebody that didn't even have a garden, a what, over a year ago. And now she's got a massive garden and spreading the joys in her neighborhood, which is really good. I found out my neighbor's got totes all over. He walked by one day and said, what's with the totes? And I said, well, or he actually said containers. And I said, well, you know, it's easier to maintain, easier to water. You know, when you're watering, I would have, if I had all these in the ground, I would literally have to soak the ground. I would, it would take me probably 20 minutes, what you see here, to water, to make sure I soak the ground and make sure the plants are getting it. Because like I always say, the water could go down around the plants, but if a, if a river forms, it will turn and your plants won't get the water. So I would have to soak everything. By putting it in totes, you can have full control over the totes. When you water a tote, there's no way the plant's not getting the water. If you've got gophers, you don't have gophers anymore because gophers are not gonna go through the bottom of plastic. They don't even know there's plants there. If you've got other issues, if you want to cover it up from birds, you can use tool. I am now using tool as a trellis. See, my cucumbers are growing up that. So you could cover the tops if you wanted the birds not to come in. Birds do not get stuck to tool. They do get stuck to netting. They do die on netting because they get their foot caught in it. It's bigger holes. Then as they're trying to unwind and get out, their foot is caught. They can't get out. And a lot of people will come home and find dead birds in the sun stuck to their bird netting. Uh, protective plant netting, the birds get stuck to it. They don't get stuck to this. The only thing is their nail might get on it and they pull their nail out and off they go. I have never had a bird stuck to it. I've never had anything stuck to it. I was surprised and happy to see that my cucumber is stuck to it. See, look at that. They're climbing and twisting on the tool. So it's working really, really good. So we do what we can and that's basically it. We try different things and that's that's what I'm trying. If it works, I tell you. If it doesn't work, I'll tell you. But the totes, like I told my neighbor, I have control. After he asked me all the questions, he told me, yeah, he's been walking by and they set it up and they've got a garden. I said, you, you don't have a garden? He said, no. He said he couldn't grow because all the gophers were just taking everything away. And I'll tell you, it's more than gophers. It is ground squirrels too. They take a lot away. But with the totes, you have absolutely zero with gophers. So yes, now he's got a vegetable garden, he told me, all in totes. I told him to try to plant some things next to the totes where the water's draining out and see what happens But in, because he's got it on soil. But you have full water control. You have full control. If you had a massive, massive snail and slug problem, 
I mean, I don't really have any snails or slugs here to speak of, and there's always going to be some. You want to not use something that they can hide in. Remember, snails and slugs hide in things. So anything that's bent, they can get in and sleep, and then they'll come out at night and just decimate your garden. Um, sometimes cardboard does that. If you put, that's why I don't use cardboard or put it in because if it cardboard is not under the ground and it has a space, they'll get in there. They'll load up in that. There's different things they'll load up in. So you don't want to give them hiding spaces. The other thing too is there's multiple ways if you had a big snail and slug problem to do it. You could cover your totes. There's ways of covering it to keep them out because they can't go through to tool. And another way, and I'll have to show you how I have done it before, is to actually take an empty tote and you could, well, maybe a smaller tote, not such a big one. You could actually, the, the tool I get is 54 inches wide. You could drop it into a container, fill it up with your soil, everything you want, and then lift the tool up and put a stake in the middle and kind of teepee it. They can't get in. Nothing can get in. Now, if you trap something in there, like roly-polies, then they're going to live in there because they're trapped in, but they can't get in. So there's different ways of using tool for that. You can almost use tool for everything. That's why I'm just crazy about it. No, I am not a sponsor of their company, but they did call to tell me it was funny. We sold out of Hunter Green. But you know what? I, I keep buying. eBay gives, uh, I buy it on eBay, and I'll put the link down below. They give off and on these coupons, spend $20, get 10, 10 off. Sometimes they give you $5. If, I, if there's nothing I need, then I'll buy more tool because I can throw it in the closet. I can throw it somewhere and not worry about it. I bought red and black, and I love black tool. I'm going to string it up in the front, and I'll take you with me on that. The black tool, see green, you see the green. Mint green, you see. Gary likes seeing it because he wants to cover the fruit in his garden, so he knows right away, oh, there's red, there's a fruit there. But black is beautiful. It just disappears. You, you, it looked like a shadow, but it disappears. And I really like the black, so I know that's going to be the next one to run out. It doesn't matter what color it is. It doesn't hinder the plant in any way if you're using a red or purple. And, you know, you want to decorate your whole yard and make it in all different colors. That would be perfectly fine. I'm working on colors right now in some totes that I want to get into. So that was it. Why I do certain things. I never know what I'm going to do. I can tell you I'm going to go in the house and go make cereal and I could walk in the house and make scrambled eggs with grated up zucchini. That's the way I am. I never know what I'm going to do. Who knew last night, one o'clock in the morning, I'd be making pickles and candy. Gary got up was he was so ecstatic. This is the same like my mom made. I didn't even know that. He said, I love it. Yeah, I said, well, don't eat too much. I don't want you to rot your teeth out. But uh, he liked it. So with that, I hope I answered some questions why I do certain things. And like I said, I like picking as I need. So I don't harvest. I will never harvest. There's no reason to harvest and then put where? Can it? Uh, put it in the freezer? No. I tend to do a little bit of a harvest when I know growing season is ending for certain things. And maybe I will freeze some mint. Maybe I will freeze some zucchini. But right now, I'm not thinking of freezing anything for many, many months. And I can rotate plants through that are going to grow good through the winter. And I've got, you know, people I know in Big Bear that have a wall or have against their house and they're growing tomatoes, they told me, in the snow by draping some plastic over it. So there's ways of getting things to grow in different areas. So that's it. This is me having coffee in the morning, looking at all this and letting you know those totes, starting at the colored ones, going all the way down take me less than two minutes to water everything. Really, because I'm watering the totes. Just walking through, not the ground. I don't have to worry if the ground is saturated. I am only running a hose in the totes, giving them water, and that's all that you need to do. You wanna run drip lines, that's fine. I'm not running drip lines all over, but drip lines are good. There's a lot of people that use it. But like I said, there's also issues. It costs a lot of money. You have to make sure no critters get into it. You have to make sure it's working. They get blocked up. And you may think it's working and not notice for a few days, and boom, your plants are gone. So there's nothing wrong with it. You have to keep up with drip lines. I'm home, so I'll water every few days. Maybe I won't water for three days. It depends on the weather. If it rains, I don't have to water at all. If it doesn't rain, then I come out here and water. And if it's super hot, I'll water in the morning. And if I want, it, I love coming out in the garden. I'll water at night. I don't know. 
I never know what I'm going to do. So I hope I answered a couple questions on that. Just thought I'd take you with me on this. And I really, really want everybody to grow something, even if it's just one chair. And I'm going to set up two chairs in this garden here. But one chair set up with stuff you like, even if it's herbs, basil, sage, parsley, walking onions, something you could just go grab and add to whatever you're eating that day. Have a great day. And don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye, everybody. Where is that cucumber? You know, cucumbers hide. They do. They hide. There it is. I've got my first cucumber. Waiting for it to get a little bit bigger. And hopefully there's another one hiding around here so I can make pickles out of cucumbers and not zucchini. <sighs> no, better do zucchini. Got tons of zucchini. At least the dogs like them. Kitty likes it, too. Guess what I got? Oh my goodness, you're just gonna take it away.